Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Bryce. I'm a member of the STEC team as an NEA consultant. I'm also the program director at Parent Teacher Home Visits. Before we begin, I invite you to take a minute to think to yourself about everything that you may know about a needs and asset assessment. Why do you think it's important? And how do your values and your beliefs influence what it might look, feel, and sound like? Now, as you reflect, I want to offer another point for consideration. What if I told you that the needs and asset assessment isn't something that you do in order to start the work of transformation? Instead of thinking of it as a survey that you use to kind of create a menu of service offerings, I hope that you begin to think of it as the work itself and that when you do it well, it can too produce transformational results. Now, let me share a story with you that kind of highlights this. In my prior role, I was a central office administrator tasked with leading the expansion of community schools in my district. We were under immense pressure to turn schools around and quickly. And when I think back to that time, I really kind of think about one school in particular. This elementary school had a reputation of being the worst in our district. Not only was it on the brink of closure, because of low uh, student achievement. A team of district administrators had to be deployed each day to get kids under control. And of course, morale, it was so low. And um, as a result, we only had a few teachers return each year. Now, as you can imagine, this school faced a never ending cycle of new school improvement initiatives and those quick fixes that caused a lot of harm and fueled distrust. So despite this often overwhelming sense of urgency, we held firm that we needed to do something different. We needed to do something transformational. And in that first year, we ended up focusing solely on deeply engaging 75 to 100 percent of students, staff, family members, and community members in a needs and asset assessment. Now this, I'm not going to lie, it took time and it took persistence. And in fact, those first few months were incredibly hard as we had to kind of figure out our path forward and really build those engagement muscles. But when we got to the end of that first year and we kind of took stock of everything, we were absolutely amazed. Student learning gains and proficiency rates jumped up dramatically. We had families coming to the school in droves, um, wanting to connect and, and engage in community building and shared learning. Our culture and climate data um, kind of improved the most in the district. And then of course, and this is something I'm really uh, so proud of, after a year of deep listening and working towards that shared vision, all except for a few teachers who had to move out of state returned. Um, so there was a real shift that happened. But this elementary school wasn't the only one who experienced this. Interestingly, all of the community schools in our district who committed deeply to those mindsets and to this approach to engagement in a needs and asset assessment saw similarly impressive results. Now, how is it that a needs and asset assessment can do all of that? Well, simply put, there is real power in dreaming big together. We rooted ourselves in mindsets and ways of being that enabled these changes to happen. We embraced collaboration. We held space for authentic relationship building. We sought out and uplifted um, others' experiences and strengths. And we engaged in some possibility thinking together. And in the end, we were able to not only identify a clear set of priorities that stemmed from that kind of co-constructed aspirational vision, but we mobilized an entire community. They were motivated, they were inspired to continue coming together and to work on things together. Um, and those were the things that mattered to them most. 
Now, as for how to do it, the STACs captured um, some concrete steps to take when engaging interest holders in both the development and the execution of that needs and asset assessment. Now, you could check out the full guide for um, a deep exploration, but today we're going to share with you a new tool, and that is an abbreviated tabled version that kind of serves as a scaffold to that long kind of document. Now, the link to the needs and asset assessment table is in the chat box, but let me go ahead and give you a quick tour. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. So, as you can see, this resource is going to be broken down in three kind of distinct sections. The first primary section is the before the needs and asset ass assessment. And this really captures um, all of the pre-work or the preparation that you have to do in order to um, engage in a, a robust needs and asset assessment. The second section is the completing section. This is what you do during the needs and asset assessment. And then if you were to scroll down to the bottom of the document, you're going to get to the final page, which is an after the needs and asset assessment, how you go ahead and build on uh, your learning and motivation that stemmed from the needs and asset assessment process. Now, within each section, it's all kind of structured the same way. On the far left, you're going to have the concrete steps on what you need to do to do your needs and asset assessment. That is broken up but in a few different sections. You have both the how and the why of that particular step. You have some focus questions that will really um, help guide your planning of that step. And then we have some example strategies and tactics. This is some suggested hows. Um, and then on the far right-hand side, the far right column, we are going to have a set of tools and templates. These are fillable forms that you can use as you complete your needs and asset assessment so that you don't have to recreate the wheel. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I just want to um, encourage you to go ahead and check that tool out. Hopefully you will find it useful as you complete your needs and asset assessment. But most of all, I want to encourage you again to think about your mindsets and what might need to shift to enable a really transformational approach to be taken. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back to my STAC colleagues to continue with your learning today. So thank you.